let's get started, guys. Let me just share the stream. Okay, we are live, I think. Just refresh the page here. Share the link. Back to work. Lots of debugging fuzzy. This is the goal for, for this stream. Let me just turn on the live chat. And let's get started. So first things first, I see I'm hitting some, I'm definitely hitting some issues when we started removing the filtering using the LSH. I'm not sure why this is stuck here. It seems it's running. But then there is definitely, okay. So this one failed. Let me see if I go to filter, maybe creation is still running. I'm gonna put a breakpoint here somewhere before fuzzy. Okay, definitely seems like we're running. I think this is creation. Let's see where we can Leave this into the console. Direction. It's not defined. Why not defined? Okay, let's see now. Okay, this is equation. And that was expected because I saw that in the weights and biases uh, dashboard so 35 million out of whatever this number is which is 45 million so we are getting there but still not done with creation so let's let me run it okay something failed here Okay, this is Serbian. Snap, it seems. It seems like we lost it. Everything failed. Time to debug this. Luckily, we can do, we can apply the caching. And we don't have to do stuff from scratch, so I'm gonna put a breakpoint right here. And let's run this again. Let me just remove this. Okay, we already hit the the fuzzy here. Let me just see quickly. Let's run this one. Doesn't didn't have the 
get it before y How come? What's going on here? Okay, let's just stop this. I'm gonna focus on a single direction. Let's focus only on Serbian. Let's first debug what's going on and then we can later wrap up creation. Let's see how much data we've got after filtering. I think for Serbian we were left with like 2 million sentences. Let me just find the uh, Okay, here it is. Serbian and Bosnian. Here is the Serbian. <clears throat> Let me quickly check how much we've got here. Copy the path. Root path. Let's just iterate through that path. So for file name in OS list directory, root path, file path equals this exactly we want to filter out only the yaml files so the file name ends with not quite txt but instead yaml in that case we build the file path we open read the yaml if load where do we read the okay safe load yaml this is it this is what we need go back to tmp open file path and temporarily grab this object import yaml above there and then grab the total before and total after. So total before, total after. Exactly. And then at the end, print. exactly let's run this let's see the numbers i'm expecting around 2 million or something let's see okay this is there's a mistake here this should be total before and this should be total after exactly it doesn't have total before I'll come. I see it here. Total after and total before. Aha, uh -huh, this is a dictionary object. Okay. We can't access the field by a dot. We have to just do this syntax instead. And now this should work. Okay, so 39 million, no, three, almost 4 million before and roughly 2 million after. Let's now do the same thing just instead of English Latin, let's go with Bosnian. 
left him. Let's see how much data we've lost here. I think this was this is gonna be way more uh filtering. Yeah, 15 million to 1 million. And then for creation, we unfortunately don't have all of the data, but let's see what we get if I run it for now. 8, 8 million 600, 2.5 mil. Okay. So that's definitely very, very strong filtering. But with mine data, we might have enough data even after this aggressive filtering. Okay, now let's go back, set the directions so that we only process Serbian. And then let's kick off the filtering job. Hey, Karan, thanks a lot, man. Um, I think for all of the tips, you should check out my Medium blogs. I think I, I have much more information there than what I can tell you at fuck now on the stream, honestly. Check out my uh, Getting Started with Machine Learning blog. It's on Medium. Okay, let's see. No, why is this? Why are we processing anything? We should just have data here, right? Which data set are, am I processing here? GNOME before fuzzy. Why? Where is GNOME? Ah, uh -huh, here is GNOME. And here is GNOME before fuzzy. Then why are we processing this? There is some bug here with... with this logic, so I'm gonna stop this. I need to get to the bottom of this. We should directly jump to the second stage for Serbian because we've done the first stage already. Let's see. Okay, here we are. Wikipedia health before fuzzy. Skipping. Skipping, skipping, processing them. Why? Why are we processing this file? This exists. This exists. Known before fuzzy YAML. Like I'm literally staring at it. English, Latin, Serbian, Cyrillic. Known. before fuzzy, fuzzy YAML. Here it is. Why false? What's, what is going on? Here is the file. Okay, let's see that this path, maybe I'm making some oversight here, but like, if we go and open up this and then, here it is. Aha, there is no GNOME here. Why?
Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Because I changed the number of directions and then that's why it's skipping. Okay, now it should be good. Let's run it again. Okay, that's it. We are in the second stage now. Let's build it. So the amount of inserts I'm expecting is almost 2 million. Go to dedupe. So we'll now be processing this. Let's hit F5. Build the LSH. Count the number of lines. Okay. Can we do some certain here? What's the expectation? Can we use Let's pass in the number of lines and make sure that this that the size of this one equals the number of lines. Where do we even use this? Aha, uh -huh, only here. Let's see. Zero forty eighty six. Okay, we should be a bit smarter about this whole logic. We don't want to split ten processes to process fifty lines each. There is too much overhead. This beats the purpose. We need at least thousand lines per worker, let's see, or something like that. That's one thing. And then on the other hand side, other than dynamic calculation of number of workers, we want to pass in exactly how many lines we are expected to process. Okay. How do I do that? So 
So we need to subtract this from this. So four six three is the last one. Number of lines there. Ten, ten, eleven. Okay, this one's got one too much. Huh. Okay, instead of passing a flat object, instead let's modify it in the same way. So list zip exactly. And then we pass in that one. Go back here. Do we call that? Okay, let's just rename this document offset is going to be renamed to this. So we grab the zeroth one. And the zeroth one here as well. And then we want to assert exactly. Nice. That's one thing. And then the second one is dynamically figure out the number of workers. So I don't know on top of my head what should be a reasonable number here. But let's say unless we have unless we have like I don't know 2k lines maybe to process, we don't want to have we don't want to spawn a different process. Maybe 5k makes sense. 5,000. Is the minimum. Okay. Is the upper bond so number of lines
number of lines divided by 5,000, for example. What's the difference between two slash, forward slash versus one forward slash? Okay, this is basically integer. Okay, this is a float division. Okay, so we want something like this and then plus one, right? And then we pick whatever is the minimum for the number of workers between this and the proposed number of workers. So make this, let's put a parenthesis just in case. I'm not sure what's the priority of the operators. So if we do this, let's say number of lines is 20. In that case, we'll have mean between one and eight or whatever is the default for the number of workers then. And we'll end up using only a single worker. If this keeps on increasing, we are like 20,000. Once we are 20,000, then we'll have here four plus one, five. Why would we, uh -huh. in that case, I guess we want to do something like minus one here. Because if we have 20,000, that's gonna be 19,9999 divided by 5,000, that's gonna be Three plus one four as opposed to if we didn't have minus one then we would have five workers I think this is good logic okay with this I'm gonna stop this and rerun Put the breakpoint here. Go back to filter. Kick it off again. <laughs> okay, here we are. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, one more bug. This modification needs to happen as soon as we get the number of lines. And then we can use that number of workers to get the offsets and then get the chunks here and then get the line numbers and then same for target. And then we get the target chunks. In. Okay. That's better. Rerun again. Let's see. That's just a single worker. 
哈。Let me think for a second. Okay, we can always optimize a bit more. <laughs> Again, some division by zero error. Why? What? Number of chunks. Could it be that I ended up with Okay, I have no idea what happened. We definitely have some bugs lurking around the code. Let's fix all of that. Now, why would that be zero? What? Huh, everything is filtered out here. Let's go. We are getting closer. It's the iterative game. Okay, let it run. Nice, this looks like it's working. We have some 2 million sentences to process. And then I'm like really looking forward to understanding where the bug is in when we start querying the LSH index. Ideally, when we only have a short file, I 
Ideally, we would merge it until we have enough workers to process in parallel. That would be the optimal strategy. This improved things by a bit, but we are still waiting maybe for potentially one worker here and then in the next patch we have eight workers. So those eight workers were waiting for a single worker from the previous loop iteration. So that sucks. But like, will that complicate my life if we do something like that? I think it will. Um, what's the next step? Once we have this data, the next step is to basically go to the prepare data stage and then we go through verification here validate and then retrieve data basically does what I just proposed it it grabs all of the files and concatenates all of the lines such that we have only a single file for a particular language direction as opposed to having multiple data sets. So this is kind of delegated here, but if we had it done before, in that case we could skip this here and improve the speed in the fuzzy stage of filtering, if that makes sense. So retrieve data basically, as I said, just concatenates the data. So let's go here, create the jobs, retrieve data jobs, and then retrieve data. Let's see, it's run method. In the run method, we literally just call concatenation. As you can see here, we grab the data sets and then we just concatenate the source and the target. potentially the metadata and then we build a single data set. That's what this does. And concatenate files. Okay. I mean, for that small optimization, we would complicate things. And I don't think we would gain that much. So for now, I'm going to skip doing that. Let's see where we stand here with data sets. Okay, let's just see where we are. I think I messed up again because we are now mixing up multiple mean hashes.
we need to delete the mean cache directories first. Run. One and okay, it's going fairly quickly. All of these are smaller. And ah, that was wrong. I should have deleted this instead. Okay. Let's not see the progress. Okay, here it is. Why do we have computing for seventh? Yet I don't see, aha, uh -huh, because most of them will have That's better. Compute the number of lines. If it's zero, print that it's zero and continue. Otherwise, print that we are computing. Compute the number of workers. And that's it. So this computation shouldn't take more than up to five minutes. Maybe a bit more. While we're waiting for, for that to happen, let's go and play with fast text. We want to train the model, as we said yesterday.
UI train supervise learning weight dimension size of the context window number of epochs Retrain word vector. In general, it is important to properly process your data. In particular, our example scripts in the root folder do this. Pass text assumes UTF-8 encoded text. Base tab. Max line size constant. What's the max line size? Thousand twenty four. We currently have up to thousand fifty characters. The length of a token is the number of UTF-8 characters by considering the leading two bits of a byte to identify subsequent bytes of a multi-byte sequence. Knowing this is especially important when choosing the minimum and maximum length of subwords. Okay. This is just an example of how these labels look like. So you start with a label and then goes the sentence. This is the example file that we will need to
Okay, let's see how other people are training these models. Load the code from all the files using the following snippet will be enough. Open read append the file code. We need to tokenize. And Python standard tokenizer for the code. code what's the tokenized library A lexical scanner for python source code implemented in python Okay, it returns back the five tuples. If it's number. Would be tokenized with the following output where the first column is the range of the line column coordinates where the token is found, the second column is the name of the token, and the final column is the value of the token. Okay. Try to tokenize for C in G. Grab the tokens. Load all the files. Go through the file code. Try and tokenize the Python and append. Well, let's quickly just try how this works. Why not? 
while we're waiting for this to finish, I'm going to go here. Let's try this. Okay, here is how I tokenize it. Def tokenize Python. return clean tokens Just trying to map this tokenized list to what I actually inputted. Aha, there is more. Return clean tokens. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, I already understand how this works roughly, so this is going to fail now, but that's fine. Okay, finally he trains the model. They use the following hyperparameters. 192 for the vector size, learning rate. Tokenized data. Data description. Data size. And then querying the model. Okay, not super informative. Let's go beyond.
Let me see whether there are any questions. <laughs> hey, Tron. There, there is too much content, I guess. I'm, I'm fine with having a couple of people who, who, are, who care about this, honestly. So, first I should tokenize each sentence to its words, hence converting each sentence to a list of words. Then this list should be appended to a final list. Therefore, at the end, I will have a nested list containing all tokenized sentences. Strip tokenize append however the number of sentences is very large and the program can't handle it I wonder why no one, even including fast text folks, made a simple tutorial explaining, giving some intuition behind the parameters and for how to train for different use cases. Everybody seems to be using Gensim instead of uh, instead of Meta's implementations. Open source library for unsupervised topic modeling, document indexing, retrieval by similarity, and other NLP functionalities using modern statistical ML. Implementing Python and Cython for performance. Okay, I skimmed through this last night as well on the previous stream, so I'm not going to dig into all of the details here. This is 88 megabytes, fast X model is that many megabytes, that bigger, expected matrix size. For fast X is what, 71,000 plus buckets times 100 dimensions times 4 for 4 bytes. Well, yeah, FastX model also has a linear classifier on top of that. That's probably explaining for some amount of memory, but not sure how much. Train the model. and then save it and then compare the results.
Let's start by defining a helper function which will perform similarity searches using both models and then display them side by side. That way we can apply it to a number of different words. Compare the results. Let's see what they do here. The word has that many samples in the training text. Find the most similar word. And then go through the results. See the occurrence. The score. So word, count, and score. And then they create a data frame. Okay, let's see what we get as a result. So the first one is descending has the highest score, whereas word to vec gives a sarcastic and aggressive. Descending and ascending. Okay, focusing too much on the, too little on semantics, too much on the engrams. Using subword information works exceptionally well here. Without a subword, 8 out of the 10 results are garbage. Undertrained vectors tend to have low norms. Okay. None of this is super useful. Looking just for some insights on the training side. Okay, let's see a couple of these cells for preparing the data. Hey, 
Japanese. Um, I probably won't have the bandwidth to do something for absolute beginners. There is a plenty of people who can create such content, whereas there is not that many people that can create the content I can. So that's how I think about this. Everything is going great. Thanks, man. Thanks for asking. Hope you're doing well as well. So file name, attack, annotated comments, TSV file. If it doesn't exist, then we download it. Attack annotations. Let's see what this is. TSV. Oops. Parse the data set, tokenize the comments, apply replacing only with a single space. Next, use GenSim to perform a simple tokenization strategy to the text and turn each comment into a list of words. So we go through the comments, a simple pre process. And then we count the number of comments. And that's it. That's how they get sentences. Let's just see what this function does. Maybe I can find something useful in this video as well. Data consists of thousands of questions asked, which have various assigned levels and already present in the fast 
text format. Here we require data where each line contains text information that is classified for levels, for example. Everybody is just using this as a complete black box. Nobody's thinking about optimality. Plus anecdotal evaluation here. We can remove the punctuation, we can remove the uppercase, we can remove also non-printing characters, we're going to do all of that ourselves. Use the bigram instead of just unigram. I'm not sure I understood this part. Isn't word engrams? Well, why are they using the character level engrams? Okay, nothing super useful. More focus can be given to those words that define the meaning of the text. Wait, why is this still running? Why is this so slow? Stop words for English. I 
if it's not in the stop words then we save it let's see what's the what are the stop words for english Okay, nice. Finally. This took a bit longer than I expected, honestly. But now we'll be going through these. Wait, what? Why is this? Why so little? Aha! Okay. That's actually fine. We are dumping... Wait, 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 wait. For each data set, we should have multiple... We should have many more pickle files. Maybe this assert was just getting, was not crashing our program. Let's maybe do something like if this equals this. In that case, we dump this. Otherwise, we dump with the error. Yeah, this is unexpected small amount of pickle files. I suspect many of them were crashing. Okay. Let's see this.
Let me kick it off again, see whether we are hitting any errors there. We can just run this in the background, it doesn't matter that much, we're gonna focus on the LID either way. So it's not blocking us. Or anything. Let's just see whether we end up with errors. Okay, let's rerun this. What are the stop words? Interesting. A list of prevalent but uninformative words that you want to ignore. Okay, this is kind of random heuristic. Numbers, punctuation, and special characters add noise to the text and are of no use. Also, they take unnecessary space in the memory. So we have to remove them. Only if there is a match. So we go for item in X. If there is a match, then we keep it. Fair enough. I wish I knew how we should use our existing LAD systems. There is no mention of how they were trained, how the data was processed. The classes in the training data set have been sampled to help ameliorate class Q. Let's download this in the background while we're waiting.
Let's just navigate to, to the root of your sec. And then let's download this data set. It's going to take a while. We can do that in the background. Different inflected forms of the word called lemma and maps these words into one common root. A central word is surrounded by a context word. Given the context, word identify the central word. It maximizes the probability of the word based on the word co-occurrences within a distance of n. I don't have any experience with fast tech, so that's why I have to take a bit more time to just let it sink in, play a bit with all of this. Um, check out the data set that was used to train the open LID system. Whoops. <clears throat> Let's go. Let me see whether anybody has a question. Okay. The skip gram model and the C. Continuous bag of words miles. How fast text vectorizes text? Character engrams. I, I thought it's word engram. Okay.
we print out the data set that we will be working with. We now build a basic model. We set the vector size equal five so the dimensions of our output vector will be five. We set the window to three. So this is the sliding window that will define the neighboring words to take as context words. So does three mean we have three on the left and three on the right plus the central or is it three in total? Like why don't people <laughs> explain stuff when they're writing blogs? It's just crazy. It's so simple. The mean count parameter is set to one. As we run the model code, we have now defined the model. That's why they because they've set the vector size to five. Okay. min n and min max n. We didn't use that, right? We did not. We use character engrams to represent each embedding. We do this with the help of min n and, min and max n. The minimum. We set the character engram from 1 to 5, so characters engrams in this range will be taken into consideration when generating embeddings. Then they train again. What's the default value for these parameters? Let me just see in the Uh -huh, zero. It's not being used by default. So how do they combine the word engrams with character engrams? This is not clear yet to me. There is no explanation in the readme. Okay, we'll figure out those details soon. I need some understanding before I start training this.
Okay, this is short enough. Let's quickly read through this. is used to predict the context word for a given target word. It's reverse of the CB of the continuous bag of words. The cat ate, drank, slept, sat. The word set will be given and we'll try to predict words cat mat at positions minus one and three respectively given set is at position zero we do not predict common or stop words such as the okay so that's how sp skip cram works As we can see, W of T is the target word or input given. There is one hidden layer which performs the dot product between the weight matrix and the input vector. No activation function is used in the hidden layer. Now the result of the dot product as the the hidden layer is passed to the alpha layer. Alpha layer computes the dot product between the alpha vector of the hidden layer and the weight matrix of the alpha layer. Then we apply the softmax activation. So that's basically a linear layer on top of the embedding output. Then we apply the softmax activation function to compute the probability of words appearing to be in the context of W of T at given context location. Okay, let me think for a second. So, how do we know which is left, which is right? So we map vector to the output vector of the hidden layer. And then we have one more layer there. And I guess, Okay, I guess that second layer is gonna have, depending on the Skibra model we're training, it might have like four outputs. Or no, wait. Let's see how exactly this works. The dictionary of unique words present in our data set or text, known as the vocab and is known words to the system. The window size is the maximum context location at which the words need to be predicted. For example, in the given architecture image, the window size is two. Therefore, we will be predicting the words at context location. Okay, so okay, so two means two on one side. That's what two means. Context window is the number, so that's the window size. Context window is the number of words to be predicted, which can occur in the range of the given word. Isn't that the same as the as this? The value of a context window is double the window size. Uh -huh. That is 2C and is represented by K. 
Okay, they are directly related. The dimension of the input vector equals the of an input vector is equal to this. Aha! Because each word is encoded using one hot encoding. The weight matrix for the hidden layer is of dimension this. Where is the modulus fine which returns the size of them? Okay, the output vector of the hidden layer is h of n. The weight matrix between the hidden and the output is of dimensions this. The dot product between gives us the vector u. So we start here, we reduce the dimension, and then uh -huh, and then we repeat. Okay, this makes sense. So then we have four of these as the output. Working steps. The words are converted into a vector using the hot encoding, one hot encoding. Okay. The word is then passed to hidden layer. The teeth row of this matrix will be the output. And then once we have that, so we basically just grab its embedding and then directly map. Now to find the probability of each vector, we'll use the softmax as each iteration gives output vector u, which is of one hot encoding type. Now to find the probability, we'll use softmax at each. The word with the highest probability is the result. And if the, okay, we use back prop to modify the weight vectors W and W prime, W being the representation. These steps will be executed for each word present in the vocab. and each word will be passed k times. Why vocab? You, they probably meant text. You go through the text and then, depending on the statistics of the text, that's how, ta how many times you'll pick up a particular word. Is K used as a symbol for the 
Yes. Context window. Finding the best code is difficult. Softmax is expensive. The time required for training this algorithm is high. Have you heard of transformers, bro? Okay. This is actually a good explanation of the skipper model. Fairly good. Um, there is some misunderstanding here, I think. Okay. Let's see what we have here in Kaggle. Let me also see what's going on here. Are there any errors here? There seems to be zero errors, but like that's confusing. Why? How come we have so little min hashes? Hmm. Let me just quickly go to dedupe again. Just doesn't make any sense. Because Serbian primary, Serbian Cyrillic has how many data sets? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Let me just see quickly. Go to here, HBS, primary. Okay, I can't get a number like that. Um, so here is the number here. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Fifteen selected. Okay, because some of them will be skipped because uh, the first stage filtered them out. That's fine. That part I can I can accept. But the part that's confusing is 
if we go to dedupe here so we kick off our run maybe most of these data sets are just like a single worker and because of that basically couple that with the number of skip data sets we might end up only using gate workers a couple of times but even a couple of times would be 16 we have 15 does it add up I'm not sure I'd love to understand let's put the breakpoint here and compute the number of lines just to see what we can expect once we hit this okay until then let's keep on analyzing and learning about fast text is fast text skip gram I guess that's one of the questions I have skip skip gram I have no idea what buckets are used for and I have no idea how they combine character engram with word engram. I have no idea what they're using as the default model. Like this is stuck completely. Most people just use this as a black box. They don't even care for the performance. Let's read through this. This looks useful. Using fast text models, not vectors for robust embeddings. I like to explain my approach of using pre-trained fast text models as input to KRS neural networks. A word is a word embedding, not unlike word to back or glove. But the cool thing is that each word vector is based on sub word character engrams. Okay, that part I don't understand. Con completely but let's do something like this guys remove enumerate and then grab the data set and just call this I'll call this TMP TMP A okay let's do string so this will be one worker one one and then hundred thousand that's gonna be definitely eight so that's ten this is two that's twelve
eight, twenty, twenty two, twenty six. There, there, there should be much more, many more min hash outputs, or I'm just like misinterpreting something completely here. Where is the output? Wait, output directory is here. Let's just open up this, this path. No way, something is not okay here. My God, my God, I'm stupid. Oh my god, I'm stupid. Okay, that was a bug. That was a nasty bug because I, uh, yeah. This should be called dynamic. So what I've done is I basically updated the number of words. So that means I'd have 10 and then as, as soon as I hit 1, it would always remain at 1. That's why it was so slow. And completely beats the purpose. So, like, don't change this. Never change this. never change this so now let's see that's why it was so slow we can bump it up to even 16 it's gonna be faster so always see adaptively what's smaller and then use that to set the offsets and then get the target from the source okay so number of workers is only used there We fixed the bug. That was stupid. Let's wait until we hit here and then I'm going to kick it off and we can com com continue analyzing it here. Okay, let's go. It's based on subword character engrams. This means that even for previously unseen words, the model can make an educated guess. Check out the GitHub and the website. Why 60 gigabytes? How big of a table this guy has?
pre-trained on English Wikipedia. Nearest neighbor. Okay, special symbols should definitely be removed. Cool. Very word one in cell in cell. This tells us they converted all numbers to their text equivalent, and so should we. Well, for our purposes because I'm just trying to detect which language are, am I dealing with. We want to filter out the, the, the words, the, the digits. Does We've downloaded the data set as well in the background. Let's continue. Loading and cleaning the data. To, cl to clean and prepare a single string, we'll use it later to prepare our string data. Also, we load the data as we are used to. lowercase replace the IPs this might be useful Isolate the punctuation. Spaces up stuff. Uh huh, yeah, there was a space I missed that. Remove some special characters.
potentially we can do this or we can just remove everything or just remove the digits all together the model normalize the text splits the text into words grab the last window length words create the mp0 with a length and number of features and then go through the window Pass in the word and then okay, so basically fill fill it fill up the the model embedding vectors here. Let's see, so you see how, how faster this was this time. And many more, as you can see, many more uh, mean caches there. Let me just try something. Again, I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do, uh, uh, um, I'm gonna compute something like this. and then compute this logic. Put 10 there, put element here, okay. And now let's sum that up. So 70, that's how many we're expecting. And that's precisely the number here. So that now looks to be good. Um, Let's do this, insert the data. The idea is that instead of converting the whole chain set to one large array, we can write a function that just spits out one batch of data at a time infinitely. So what does this guy do here?
Okay. That was it. Wait, wait, fuzzy data sets. Before fuzzy, yes, okay. Let me just quickly see whether I need to change anything here. Before fuzzy. Okay, it seems we processed some of these already. Let me delete all of these YAML files without before fuzzy. Okay, let's delete these. Okay, let's go. Okay. Uh, let's see what mistakes have I introduced here. Just a couple more things I'd like to read later. Let's just wrap up this. Let me see whether anybody's writing anything. Okay. So why is this crashing? Because total after is not available and why is total after not available? Total before because it's a dictionary as always. But then, why does it work here? It's filtering, it's an object, right? It's an object. Aha, when we save load, we get a dictionary, okay. Fair enough. Let me see whether I can convert this into a filtering count. I think we will be able to do that. So we need a small modification here. When we do this, we have to grab the filtering counts. And do something like this, plus to, we have to add some syntax for unpacking here. I'm not sure whether it's maybe something like this, or let's see whether this works. Um, let's also add a caching mechanism quickly. 
here. If OS path exists, if this exists, then just return immediately. Catching. Otherwise, process that chunk, and that's it. With that out of the way, we should be super fast to get back to here and continue. This should be super fast. It's literally spawning the thread, the processes, they see that the file exists, they return back. And then the only slow thing is to actually create the LSH given the I expected this to be even faster. We're not modifying anything. Why is this so slow still? So that's the overhead, I guess, of starting a process in Python. Not really lightweight. Um, okay, let's just continue doing this. Okay, let's skim through this post. The model correctly predicted only one label. Suppose for a sentence that we gave the model for classification from our stock exchange cooking sample. The model predicted the labels food safety, baking equipment, substitutions and bread and the actual labels are equipment, cleaning and knives. Here out of the top five labels that the model predicted only one is correct so the precision becomes one out of five is correct. Also, out of the three correct labels, the model correctly predicted only one label.
cleaning. But we can't go through the entire data and clean this. We will use simple command to convert all uppercase letters to lowercase. Splitting the data. That was super slow. Let me see whether anything changed here. Okay, why it didn't change anything yet it was so slow. Interesting. Nice. Okay, here we are. We are writing to output path source. And of course, I managed to forget to add the gzip extension here, given that Let's see, I need to delete some of the stuff here. Before fuzzy. Anything that doesn't contain before fuzzy. I mean, okay, um, I can just post hoc rename them so that they contain the gzip or, okay.
to speed up things a bit, I'll just comment out everything for the time being here. And simply do this. This should be much faster now. Okay. Of course, we have to insert 2 million mini caches inside of our LSH index. Okay. Finally, filter the line. Okay. Here we are. We attempt to remove this guy. But this probably fails, right? Oh, this one doesn't fail. Interesting. Let's continue. So when does this fail? It fails at one point, but like I don't know when or why. Huh! Oh, 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 I see what's going on. Oh, I see what's going on. Okay. So we are passing in, we're encoding the information here. But we are using I, which is inputs, which is basically for a particular, huh, this is not a global index. That's the issue. Let me think for a second, guys. Um, can I be sure that we are always running in the same order? Let me think for a second. So there is an assumption in the dedupe logic here that we are running in a particular order of data sets that particular order dictates this global offset and whatnot. So global offset is basically dictated by the order of the data sets. If I can be, sh if I can guarantee that my data sets are in the same order as my fuzzy data sets, which I think we should be able to do because we do the same thing here. We go through the data sets and we map them directly into fuzzy. Okay, in that case, what they actually need to do is pass the counter. I need to pass the counter as the I need to pass the counter as the
information here and I also need to put this here okay that now makes sense so I'm iterating to the data then I go through the particular fuzzy data set and again we can guarantee now because of the order that these indices are the same ones that we've used to create our LSH index so counter we pass it in here Okay. This should work. This should completely not work. If I don't, if I'm not misunderstanding something, this should completely be correct now. Let me go back to the dupe again for a second. Let's stop the run. Okay, this should work. There is one way we can check and be certain. In the filtering here, if we use this line and we min hash it and we compare, min hash should be a deterministic process. No, it's not going to be deterministic. Wait. Where will it be deterministic somehow? Okay, let's just run this, guys. Oh, come. What's going on, guys?
when we were building this, there must have been a moment when this was zero, right? Global offset, this plus this, this should have been zero at one point of time, which means we should have inserted zero here. Yet, for some reason, this is complaining. Okay, I'm, I'm really confused now. I thought I, I grokked it. Let's kick it off again. Here is zero. We literally insert zero with this logic. Aha. Why is this different down there? Why is this different? It's not. We're just using I instead of counter. If we were to replace this with I, they're the same. Yeah, I don't get it. Let's wait until we hit this. about billion words in less than 10 minutes Okay, this worked. Why is <laughs> why is it zero again? What the fuck? Why is it zero again? I use a counter. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Okay, 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 this is just so tricky. Um, counter needs to be here. I, I hate when there is this temporal cu coupling of code that, that's this strong.
Lol, this is the <laughs> the funniest statement ever for a counter increment. Um, but okay, I learned my lesson. I think we should not be completely good. This is the last time I'm saying this, I swear. Um, let's just run this and see what happens. Break it into ngram components as this. There are some ngram components for the given words. There, there will be. Nice. This should not crash anymore, I hope. These are some engram components for the given words. There will be many more components for this word, but only a few are stated here, just to get an idea. The size of the engram components can be chosen as per your choice. Wait, when your text is not words from a particular language, then using engrams won't make sense. For example, when the corpus contains IDs, you will not be storing words, but numbers and special characters. In this case, you can turn off the gram embeddings by selecting this to zero. Okay. We'll be training a skip gram model. The vec file is a text file which contains the word vectors. I think I've seen somewhere how fast text is implemented. Or maybe that was CLD3 from Google. 
I think the readme of CLD3 had a bit better explanation. CLD3, GitHub, Google. I think this one had a literally architecture. Yeah. I mean, we can always dig into the source code, but. To train a small speech to speech synthesis model. You can always try and train you, but like without any bigger data and compute, you're gonna, you won't get great results. Uh, as for the papers, I don't know on top of my head, honestly. I'd have to search myself as well. A bag of engram representation along with word vectors. We're just collecting a ton of stuff we learned along the way in Ocean, and then later we can train the model. Importing processing using simple process and prefixing with a label. To improve the performance, the word engram is set to two. Train on bigrams instead of considering individual words. Okay, I think we've got everything we need. Um, almost. I'm going to maybe check this video out, quickly skim it. But like, we'll probably have to dig into the source code here. Okay, it seems this is working. I don't see any failures anymore. That's promising.
I think this was the explanation we saw before. They just use this. They generate their documentation directly from the GitHub. Trained on data from Wikipedia, Tatoeba, set times used under the share alike license. Two versions of the model. Let's see how it was trained. Okay, we're going to read the paper to see how it was trained. I forgot some of the details here. Okay, that's it. We might need to analyze some C code. I haven't done that in a while, even though in my early days when I just started working at Microsoft, I was just using C++ for HoloLens project. I haven't used it in a while though. Okay, we can, if it's necessary, We did go through this, right? Left with these few blocks, blog in the video. Let's just see whether there is anything interesting here. It's not only a wrapper around Facebook's implementation. Okay, this might be fun.
Yeah, I constantly see, see, see conflicting information for the sake of simplicity. And language independence. Subwords are taken to be the character and engrams of the words. The vector for a word is simply taken to be the sum of all vectors of its component character engrams. Ah, uh -huh. so default model is actually continuous bag of words. Number of epochs, sorted vocab, minimum length of the character engram, and maximum length. Number of buckets used used for hashing the engrams. So I guess that's a vocab size limitation, two million. Just a second, guys. Okay. Parameters min n and min, min max n control the length of character engrams that each word is broken down into. Okay, let's skim this. Comparison of fast text and word to vec. According to the paper, why didn't I just read the paper? Why am I so stupid? Embeddings for words are represented by the sum of their engram embeddings.
uses character as well as the actual word embeddings. My hypothesis for semantic accuracy being lower for the fast text with engrams model is that most of the words in the semantic analogies are standalone words. Okay, so apparently we have to, the bigger the corpus, the better the models, surprise, surprise. The training times are slightly lower than fast text, no engram and significantly lower than the engram variant. Okay. Let's skim through main parts of the paper, enriching word vectors with subword information. bag of character engrams. Okay. Representing words by a sum of its character engrams. We will begin by presenting the general framework that we use to train the word vectors. And then present our subword model. And eventually describe how we handle the, the dictionary of character engrams. So the general model. Maximize the following objective. The likelihood of the context words given the target word.
where now let us consider that we are given a scoring function s which maps pairs of words to scores in space of real numbers. One possible choice is to define the probability of a context word is a softmax. Okay. However, such a model is not adapted to our case, as it implies that, given a word, we only predict one context word. The problem of predicting context words can instead be framed as a set of independent binary classification tasks. For the word the position T, we consider all context words as positive examples and sample negatives at random from the dictionary. For a chosen context position, we obtain the following negative log likelihood. So if we want to minimize this, If we wish to minimize this, then we wish to minimize this. If we wish to minimize this, we wish to maximize this. So we want to make them similar, as similar as possible. And we want to make them these as this similar as possible. So target as similar as possible to the context word and as this similar as possible to the negatives. And now the objective is just a sum of those for different context words. Two vectors, u sub w and v sub w. These two vectors are sometimes referred to as input and output vectors in the literature. Okay, and now they introduce the subword model. So that's the this was just a classical skip gram model. And now this is their innovation from the model inside, only this half of a page. Are you, um, this was getting confusing though. Let us define for each word two vectors. Why would we define for each word two vectors? That's confusing, but then they go on to say something that makes sense, but that was completely confusing. Um, by using a distinct vector representation for each word, the script gram model ignores the internal structure of the words. In this section, we propose a different scoring function in order to take into account this information. Each word is represented as a bag of character engrams. We add special boundary symbols, smaller than and bigger than at the beginning and end of words, allowing to distinguish prefixes and suffixes from other character sequences. We also include the word W itself in the set of its engrams. To learn representation for each word, uh, to learn the representation for each word. Taking the word where and N3 as an example, it will be represented by the character engrams. and the special sequence where. Okay.
So this is the only difference, I guess. The skip gram logic still remains the same. So you want to maximize the target word similarity with the context words and minimize and minimize the similarity with the negatives. But this time you just represent your words, your word vectors as a sum of these combination of character engrams and the actual word. Uh -huh. In practice, we extract all the engrams greater or equal to 3 and smaller or equal to 6. This is a very simple, and that's precisely what we've seen here. Now this makes sense, guys. Now this makes sense. So, I've seen that setting somewhere. I swear to God, I've seen it somewhere. <laughs> Ah, terrible documentation. Okay, we'll see that later, but I'm fairly sure that was the case. So suppose they are given a dictionary of n of n grams of size G. Got it. So that's how they get the similarity between two words. They compare their a sum of similarities between the engrams. They set this to 2 million. We've seen this number. Ultimately, a word is represented by its index in the word dictionary and the set of hashed engrams it contains. By its index in the word dictionary and the set of hashed engrams. They lost me here. We catch the character sequences.
for both our model and the baseline experience, we use the following parameters. The word vectors have dimension 300. For each positive, we sample five negatives with probability proportional to the square root of the unigram frequency. We use a context window of size C and uniformly sample the size C between 1 and 5. Uh huh. Oh no. We were almost there, but the counts. Let's see the counts. We're actually done. We we managed to process Serbian, but we lost the data here. Let's see. What can we do? Why do they have dictionary? This was a mistake here, but like, let me save this. Will this work? Let's just see the, the counts. We just need to sum them up to get the final results. Total after fuzzy. Okay, so we can see here we started with 643. After the first stage, we got to this and then to 355. Um, let me quickly think through this. Why is this not working? Did they change the counts in any way? I don't think I did. So counts are up there. It just doesn't make sense. Uh -huh. If it exists, we'll load it. We start with empty. If the file exists, then we open and load. Aha. Okay, same issue as before.
we have to map it to we have to go through the counts and create a new count. So let's do something like this, guys. So let's do for e value in counts items. We want to grab the value and convert it into this. We want to do something like this, e, and then this, of value, and then unpack it. So by doing this, we built ourselves a new dictionary. I'm going to call it TMP. And now that we have this one, I think we can replace this with TMP. And this should work. Let's make it total too. Yes, sir. That was the error. And here is the final result, guys. So total before, total after, total after fuzzy, what? We only have 355. No, no way, this is, wait. Oh my God. Yes, wait. All of them were filtered out. What? Again, this is a bug. <laughs> this is obviously a bug. Oh my God. Turns out to be a bit harder than I thought. Okay, but we are making progress, guys, on both fronts, both with the LED system and with the fuzzy. I got a lot of small bugs. Okay, let's read this first. By the way, my battery might die. If that happens, um, we'll continue in the second stream after a break. Keep an eye out for the open NLV channel here. For both our model and the baseline experiments, we use the following parameters. We normalize the data using this Perl script. People really love to use these Perl scripts for some reason. We can use ChatGPT to analyze this one if it exists, which it does not. Can we go? We can use a timeline machine or however is the name.
effect of the size, effect of the size of the engrams, language modeling, qualitative analysis, Okay, let's skim through these two sections. How oh, the data influences the outcomes and the engrams. Since we exploit character level similarities between words, we are able to better model in frequent words. Results in figure one. They hit the saturation, but there is no diminishing returns. Nice. It quickly saturates. Interesting. Very, very efficient. Nice. Let's see the size of engrams. From 3 to 6, the choice was arbitrary, motivated by the fact that engrams of these lengths will cover a wide range of information. Results are reported in Table 4.
in the IJ range. Okay, so how can we parse this? How should we parse this? What is I, what is J? It looks like they are using 6-6 six, six here, where I was, I'm expecting to see 3-6 or 2-6. 3-6 or 2-6. Six, three, six is this, right? Okay, we can test this side away. Okay. That was some paper reading. Okay, this is the same Kaggle we read. Okay, nothing super informative there. We already have everything we need. Okay, guys, I think this is enough information to start working on training the LED system. Let's make a short break, just stretching the legs, and then we can continue. Um, there is two things we have to do. Uh, one is to understand what happened with... Um, with fuzzy, why am I getting zero for all of the data sets except for the first one? That definitely looks like a bug. And then the second thing is to start training the, the fast text. Okay. Quick, short, break, four minutes, be right back. Next up, fast text training, fuzzy, and fuzzy debugging. Okay, guys, catch you in a bit. Hopefully, the battery doesn't die. If that happens, as I said, we'll just continue uh, after the break.
Okay guys, I'm back. I need my pillow because of the shoulder injury. I already am feeling it a bit. So I have to... Ah, oh, better now. Let me just see, did they turn on the sound? Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, any messages? No, I don't see anything. Let's go back. So what do we want to do? Do we want to debug the fuzzy or do we want to start training? So this is not the issue anymore. Let's check out, let's maybe play a bit with the LID. So let's start with analyzing this data set. Um, let me just understand what this does. Let's just paste it to see what... Okay. Decompresses the file. Okay, this is what I'm curious about. Use the tab as the field separator. Takes the second field and prefixes it with label and then appends the first field. Okay. Can I just do this without manipulation? Okay, that's what I want to do. Without any processing, I just want to unpack it. I want to see the The type of data that was used. Data cleaning. Okay, that's what I wanted to see. Sample with temperature. Okay, this just samples, changes the proportion of the data. Let's see the clean. Clean monolingual. And let's see these guys. 
this is, I think, Moses scripts. These are just your usual scripts. I've seen, I've seen these copy pasted all around the place. Uh, was this unpacked? Yes, it was apparently. It's opened up. Dennis, are those your cute children? Sorry, guys, just a second. My girlfriend started having a meeting. Um, okay, let's open up this one. Where is the data? Let's just sort by modified. I don't see it. LID data 201. Wait. Let's just sort by the name. Ah, here it is. Will this work? Yes, it will. Okay, you can see here what it does. This is probably the name of the data set, MT560. A many-to-many -many English machine translation data set. And then usually we would prefix this with label and then put it as a prefix. But like these sentences are, as you can see, this is just raw data, okay. So this is not super informative. Not super informative. So that means we can just delete this. We just remove the... Um, Remove this file. And that's it. So let's see what they use to process. Clean monolingual. Cleans already fairly okay monolingual data and adds it to a training data DC file. Clean input file language source. Depending on the language code, they pick the language. Short code is this for Perl scripts. Pre filter. Pixie. So they call the remove non printing characters. I think that's one of the scripts above. Remove non printing characters, exactly. And then they pipe that to the detokenizer here and then split sentences Perl this one and then that's it so a lot of Perl scripts non-printing followed by the tokenizer followed by split and then they pick the script and then, if it's different than Japanese, it 
grep. Check that each line contains at least one character in the right script. This probably... I didn't know the grab has this ability. Um, This is a Unicode property scape. This is a quantifier that matches one or more of the preceding pattern one or more with the specified property. Nice. Nice. What happens if a line doesn't have any of its characters in that particular script? Okay, fair enough. And then send it here. Language code source. And then the value of the source variable. Oh, okay. This is how we get the output file. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. But we now understand how they got the final data set. She ran this, this script. And that script called this, this. I didn't call, I didn't see the normal punctuation being called. Let me quickly open this up. There is a the detokenizer. Normalize is not called. Split is called. All these are called ex except for the normalizer. Let me see whether anybody mentioned something in the issues. 
Okay. Not really. Oh my god, this is just a mess. I think it will be worth a while to analyze these four scripts to understand what she's done, what she has done. Um, to get the final data set. I definitely think she didn't call the normalize script because if this does lower casing, we saw the data set, we saw that it's not lower cased. Okay, let's take some time to analyze those scripts. Okay, I'm going to leave all of this for the second stream. Maybe take a bit more time here to just skim through the paper and see how they train the language identifier in an LB paper. Let me see whether anybody's asking a question. Wow, four hours. This is a long one. language identification. Let's see what they say here. Is the task of predicting the primary language for a span of text is widely used in commercial applications such as the tech language feature embedded in some web browsers and is of particular interest importance in NLP research. You know, challenges. If you train on Bible, maybe you will not have a reliable classifier on non-biblical domains. For classifiers to work, they must have an extremely low false positive rate.
related work. Models. In contrast, we curate Flores to use as a development set so that our LED system performance is tuned over a uniform domain mix. Our approach combines a data-driven fast text model, trained on Flores 200, with a small set of handwritten rules to address human feedback on classification errors. Really, they trained on Flores or just evaluated because Flores is super small, like you have only 997 sentences per language. Okay, utilize fast text. We embed character level engrams from the input text and leverage a multi class classifier. The lightweight nature. Okay. They tried two designs combination of multiple binary classifiers. Where the final decision is obtained by selecting the language having the highest score after the threshold is applied. Okay. Okay, we we are also going to be using softmax approach. We use publicly available datasets to train the system. We supplement these with NLB seed for any missing language. NLB seed contains what data? Let me just see quickly. NLB seed. Uh, let's go up here. Train data sets. NLB seed. I doubt it has Serbian, for example. SC and. Yeah. It doesn't have Serbian, nor it has Bosnian. Nor it has Croatian, so it's not relevant to us. Training parameters obtained with softmax loss over two epochs with a learning rate of 0 0.8 and in embeddings with 256 dimensions. They disregarded words with less than 1000 occurrences after upsampling and picked a minimum and maximum character engram length 
of 2 and 5, uh -huh. which were assigned a slot in buckets of size million. All hyperparameters were tuned on the dev set of Flores 200. May be worth extracting this and noting it here. Plain text. Improving the LAD with linguistic analysis. And then the results. Couple more pages here. Four more pages. Language identification is a challenging task for numerous failure mode exists, often exacerbated by the gap between the clean data that LID models are trained on and the noisy, noisy data that LID models are applied to. LID models are trained in a supervised manner on fluently written sentences may have difficulty Identifying grammatically incorrect and incomplete strings extracted from the web. We we'll leverage the linearity of fast text to build an easy to use interface for linguists to peek into its inner workings. The tool enabled linguists to analyze small errors and discern the, the patterns. The similarity in phonotactics between standard Malay and Indonesian, which are one of the most frequently confused language pairs. And to find out through linguistic research that in spite of obvious differences, a, de a certain degree of mutual intelligibility exists between the two. Up two labels with highest probabilities are displayed along their score. Ngrams that contributed the most are highlighted. This is super cool. To mitigate the learning of spurious correlations due to noisy train samples by modeling hundreds of languages, we worked in collaboration with linguists to develop several filters illustrated in Table 3 and described below. All are subsequently applied on our raw training dataset. Table 3 below. Character distribution profile. The public datasets we used for training were mostly built from web pages. Through investigation by linguists, numerous occurrences of mislabeled sentences we find likely caused by four passages in a different language within a page. Character histograms. 
we computed the character distributions of each language on our development set and defined an arbitrary accepted character set for each of them. By considering all characters falling be within the first 95th percentile, we subsequently filtered out any sentence from our training set that was composed of less than 80% of such accepted characters. Any sentence from our training set. that was composed of less than 80%. Unique ranges. Okay. The filter histogram script English We built a simple dedicated binary fast text classifier to filter these samples out of our training dataset. That's exactly what we're going to do, just for Croatian, Bosnian, and Serbian. This section presents a comparison of our approach to existing publicly available models. On both Flores and annotated noisy web data. Okay, guys, I think we're wrapping up. My battery might die any second, any moment now, so just FYI. Presents a comparison of our approach to existing public available models. before the performance while well, achieving significantly high performance in all three of these baselines. Furthermore, the gain Okay, the battery just died, guys. I'm gonna continue in the in the second stream.